Hello everyone. So in video two, I wanted to go a little bit into the system power wire, which is the purple wire in this case. And um, so essentially I have the power connected, the key is not yet turned, but the primary power comes into the motor through this red wire here. It goes through the 20 amp fuse that I discussed in the previous video. And what happens when you turn the key, this is the ground here, the purple wire or the system power wire, it depends on your motor, but Basically, this wire engages power to any accessories, so sensors, maybe GPS, navigation, anything like that. And as you can see here, I have the battery sensor connected to the purple wire, so it's grounded and connected to the purple wire. This is why when I turn the key, you can see the battery voltage go up. I also just want to show the back of the key switch, so as you can see, this is where you put in the key. So you can see B is where the main positive to the battery goes, M is where the negative terminal is, and A is where that purple wire is. So when you turn the key once, it provides power to A. So you're wa wondering how to wire this. This is where A is wired, with the purple wire. Turn it off, and turn it back on. Now this wire is very important. Like I said, it basically powers all your devices. So what is an easy, easy thing to do at this point is take this wire and take it to a terminal and split it up to a bunch of switches. So for example, currently, as you can see, there's a purple wire here and it is powering and connected to the RPM gauge. Now, for example, this wire could be connected to its own switch. So I could power on the motor, but the RPM gauge could be off. I could also connect it to any other sensors, for example, GPS, navigation, like I said, and each one of those could have its own switch. Now, those, those switches could also have their own fuse boxes, but I just want to point out that this entire circuit is protected by this 20 amp fuse. So all the devices that are currently could be plugged in are protected in a certain way. However, this is why this wire is so important. It is powering your devices and even this sensor right here. I'm going to use this tack sensor just because it's easier to demonstrate what I'm saying. For example, one of these wires, I think it's a, uh, doesn't really matter which one, is the power wire. So the purple wire would connect to this. Now, almost all sensors have a light plug as well. So they, uh, there's a little light that turns on. Now, for example, you could have, say you turn on the RPM gauge and it's working, but you could have another switch that turns on lights to all your gauges. So it would be a separate connector. So this is the light gauge and this is the power gauge. So for example, right now this is connected. So you can tell because when I turn the key, you'll see the arrow move just a little bit. See that move? Now, I just have this wire here connected to the purple, so to the system power. And I will just show, for example, how the light will turn on for this gauge. Now, you want, the sensor is already connected. Is connect this wire to the positive on the light for this sensor. You can't really see it as this underneath, but I know where it is. I'm just gonna briefly connect it. So as you can see, here's a little light that lights up. Now, this is just providing power to the light circuit. So as you can see, if I hook this power wire up to a switch, I could have the RPM gauge on. However, the light will be off. For example, if it's daytime. Now, when it becomes nighttime, all I have to do is simply switch, if flip a switch, and it will be on. So this is what I want to explain, is that the wire that provides power to the system, it can provide power to a whole bunch of different devices. So just be aware of what you're providing power to. I mean, this could even be a cell phone charger, it could, it could be anything. And it's all running directly through this fuse here. So, just be aware, this is why, so if you have multiple switches on your dashboard for lights, switches, navigation, any device you may have on board, there's a good chance it's running through this cable. This is why when you turn the key off, everything just instantly turns off. So even if you have a bunch of switches and they're all switched on, the minute you turn the key, everything turns off. However, once you turn the key back on, all those devices will shut off, be back on. Now. Like I said, if, for example, you want the light off, you might turn a switch off 
for the lights. So the, sen uh, the sensors will still be working, but the lights will be off. So I just wanted to explain this just so it's easier to understand how the system gets power and how all the gauges and anything else you may have is getting power through the key or as you turn the ignition. And as you can see, the power is also running through the speaker. This is why I was saying in, in uh, basically all motors, you will hear that beep when you first turn the key. But this is the older generation speaker, which does not do this. So that as the power runs through the speaker in most motors, it will notify you that the system has power. That's why you hear that beep and why it's generally so important to understand what it does. It just says the system is powered. Whatever else is connected to that power is up to you, but the system is on.